Indonesia. A breathtakingly diverse land with over 17,000 islands, holding a promising economic potential that could rival any country in the world. As the largest economy in Southeast Asia, Indonesia's revenue-generating capabilities are impressive. The country's size and diversity are both a blessing and a challenge, as they present vast growth potential, but also require thoughtful and effective policies to be realized. Thus, Indonesia's success in harnessing its potential will be determined by its ability to create an environment that fosters sustainable and equitable economic development. Indonesia's economic fate is determined by the delicate balance of its land and labor policies. Economic researchers and policy makers predict that Indonesia's GDP will exceed $7.3 trillion by 2045. Human capital development is critical to achieving this goal. With extensive government funding, Indonesia's educational system is anticipated to produce a trained workforce. With these initiatives in place, Indonesia's future financial stability appears to be promising. Indonesia's economy is predicted to rank as the fourth or fifth largest in the world in the future. According to who? A long-held belief is rooted in the correlation between a nation's size and its economic potential. But this theory is not foolproof, as the key to unlocking true economic growth lies in creating favorable policies. An economy cannot thrive without the support of a government that understands how to maximize its benefits. The country experienced political turmoil and corruption during the authoritarian rule of President Suharto from 1967 to 1998. Plus, the challenge for Indonesia is to ensure its leadership is capable and knowledgeable in creating an environment that fosters economic progress. According to Transparency International's Corruption Perceptions Index 2021, Indonesia has made significant progress in reducing corruption. It scored 53 out of 100, an improvement from 40 in 2016, placing it 102nd amongst 180 countries globally. The reduction of corruption in Indonesia is a step in the right direction for the economic and social growth of the nation. When corruption is reduced, a more open and equitable business environment can be achieved, which promotes investments, boosts economic growth and generates job opportunities. Additionally, a fair and open government can offer its people basic services like infrastructure, healthcare and education, all of which can enhance their quality of life. Both India and China already had nearly a billion people. However, it it took several decades and multiple revisions to get to where they are now. As a result, comprehending Indonesia's economy cannot be limited to how big it is and how much human capital it can create. Nor can it be limited to the available land in the nation. Indonesia will gradually take shape over the following few decades for several strategic reasons. The abundance of natural resources like oil, gas, coal and minerals must be taken into account, since they have been historically and will continue to be crucial to the nation's economy. To start with, Indonesia's population of roughly 270 million has a middle class experiencing sizable, steady growth. When a country's middle class expands, it leads to increased consumption of goods and services, which can fuel economic development and investment. However, the middle class is also vital since it helps to press for social and political stability. This is the most crucial aspect in deciding Indonesia's future economic prospects. By facilitating social mobility, the middle classes can get knowledge and skills that will allow them to better their living level. The struggle for political stability, on the other hand, is critical, since individuals stand to lose more if the political or economic institutions fail. Another point is that having a strong middle class is vital in addressing one of Indonesia's major concerns, inequality. Yes, as many people understand, these are the factors that make the middle class so essential in Indonesia. For instance, Indonesia's middle class is projected to number roughly 140 million people and has already proven to be a critical component of the country's overall economy. For immediate reference, the World Bank has written a paper on the importance of Indonesia's middle class for the future of the nation. The decision of the Indonesian government to pursue an infrastructure policy has been influenced by the middle class. The middle class needs substantial urban infrastructure to maximize the value of human capital. Airports, railroads, seaports and hospitals are a few examples of this infrastructure's valuable assets. The middle class not only significantly affects value, but is frequently the builder and provider of these services. Middle class families raised engineers and medical professionals because they could afford to send their children to college. The country is rich in coal, oil and natural gas, but is missing one more thing. 
The mining industry has been drawn to Indonesia by its wealth of natural resources. We can inspire investor confidence when we recognize how crucial Indonesia's human capital system has become and combine it with the country's natural resources. The stronger a country's economic and political prospects, the more foreign investors will come in. They will recognize the potential in serving the country's local demand, which is why many vehicle manufacturers frequently utilize Indonesia as a production base as well as a marketing sales base. If Indonesia did not have a competent government, it would not be where it is now. The Jokowi administration later prohibited the export of raw nickel resources which attracted a massive amount of foreign investment. They had every reason to be confident in this result given their abundance of natural resources, human capital and an ever-expanding infrastructure system. Thus, both recent and future significant growth has been made possible by these economic policy guidelines. This has resulted in a rise in the gross domestic product. It was expected to be worth roughly 1.38 trillion US dollars in 2022, making it the world's 17th largest economy. Among all of these internal needs, we must not overlook the rising importance of Indonesia's export economy. The export industry has thrived in the conjunction with raw nickel resources, agriculture and manufacturing sectors. Just as it had grown its infrastructure and human resources and accepted foreign investments to expand its domestic economy. According to the Comtrade database of the United Nations, China received a sizable 53 billion US dollars worth of Indonesian exports as of 2021, followed by the United States with 25 billion. Due to the abundance of the nation's natural resources, Indonesia primarily exports raw materials. The top three exports in 2021 will be mineral fuels and oils, animal and vegetable oils, and iron and steel. About $100 billion is provided by these three sectors. Then, as a result of the aforementioned factors, they have also supported efforts to maximize exports revenue. Indonesia's economic development has been shaped by a variety of factors which must be addressed to ensure its future success. The nation nevertheless faces challenges, including high levels of income inequality that, despite the growing middle class's efforts to increase wealth disparity, still trails behind the richest residents of the nation. There is also a significant informal economy, which is defined as an economic activity that is not regulated or protected by the government and occurs outside of formal locations. The problem with having a big informal sector is that it is generally characterized by poor salaries, often below the minimum wage inadequate job stability, and a lack of legal protection for workers. Finally, the continuing poverty problem in Indonesia remains a major concern. Malnourished kids that grow up without enough nourishment, care and stimulation will be detrimental to the economy of their country. One of the highest rates in the world, about 37% of children under the age of 5 are stunted in Indonesia, according to certain studies. Long-term effects on the nation may result from this, especially concerning the future opportunities in the fields of education, health and the economy. As the future champions of the nation's human capital potential, Indonesia's youngsters must be given attention if it is to become a leader in modern manufacturing in the next decades. What we've talked about thus far is an issue, but that doesn't mean the government is doing nothing. They are, without doubt, implementing several improvements and initiatives, but the country's objective of becoming the fourth or even fifth largest economy in the world by 2045 remains a long way off. Please let us know what you think. Do you think Indonesia will have a $7 trillion GDP by 2045? Consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching.